All right, everyone, so today we are visiting some family of ours that live here in Phoenix. Um, she has some beautiful orange trees, grapefruit trees, and so we're going to be them. picking them, and then she has some relatives back at home that she wants us to deliver them to, so we're excited. check and you have to do that with rats and there'll be one or two of them on the ground and one day there were like two or three of them and they were having a party that will night. they actually mm. eat the whole thing or they just like they'll the, eat the whole thing they eat the whole thing oh yeah but they'll wait until they they take a chunk out of it and then after a while it falls to the ground and they'll come back later and finish it off and the whole inside is completely uh, clear see yeah, right there see that there oh, yeah. i'll get the sun they, they're little bite marks. Fair enough. And then they hollow yeah, it out. You can see, you see it here right too. There. Um, we have a general store about, oh, what, fourth of a mile away. And I walked down there and I got ice cream. I got this good stuff, cookie dough, the best. So we're out here riding our hoverboards around eating soft serve ice cream in the West. Totally recommend you guys doing this. <laughs> This ewe's been in labor and the feet have been showing for a long time and she hasn't progressed. So we're going to see if something's going on here. We're going to help her out. It's a biggie. Huge. It's a biggie. It's a boy. It's worth living. <laughs> so when you stick a piece of straw in their nose, it causes a reflex, it's a natural reflex to cough, so. Helps him take a breath, kind of. But he's having slow go here. Dude, come on. There she started looking at it. She was just really nervous. But now she's talking to it. That's a good one. We gave Maggie a bath before she starts having her puppy. Now Elsie's gonna trim her belly so that they can find the nipples easily. Her hair's really long. Maggie's having her puppies. And she's not very really impressed that I'm in here watching her. Listen to her growl. She has seven right now. I'm not sure if she's done or she's got more. She has them all, except for the one, up between her front legs, and she's trying to hide them from me. She's still a little bit wet from her bath this morning. What are you thinking? I can't do it anymore. Oh my word, look at all these babies. We and have 54 <laughs> bottle babies. <laughs> 
Look at all of these babies. We literally have 54 sheep and goats on bottles. We're the labor and delivery unit plus nursery plus orphanage. <laughs> it's fun, but it's kind of stressful and crazy. Here's a pen of babies. Here's another pin of babies. Some more babies. More babies. More babies. Okay, I come in here. And this view is laying out flat. She's been really dopey kind of looking for the last couple days. And some not so good looking mucus, so hopefully everything goes okay. We didn't even have to try to catch her, she wants help. Try hard. It's right there. Girl, were you not trying hard enough? She's telling me she was. Is it a big one? Looks on the big side. There you come, baby. Welcome to the world. Hi. Good morning. It's a boy. You did it, Mama. You want him? Look. You want to see him? So I just, the dogs all started barking this morning and I came out and the hog hut is on fire. But the mama and three of the baby pigs are out here. So I'm gonna try to get them moved somewhere safe and I don't know where the other baby pig is. I assume it didn't make it out. Okay, we just got the mama pig in here. The babies are in here somewhere. There's the babies. Okay, so since the pig hut's gone, we're gonna put the trailer in here. This is gonna be our provision for the hog hut for right now. And we're putting it in the shop here so it'll be warm and they'll be content in here, hopefully. So I think that the fire needs a little bit of explaining, probably. I'm not sure that you could catch what all was going on there um, in those clips. So the sow farrowed on Friday and in, we had these little huts, these insulated huts that we'd bought specifically for farrowing pigs in the winter time. And of course it was six degrees the night that she farrowed. So I sat in there, Sadie and I both took turns. We sat in there um, for with her for hours while she was having these babies, getting them going, helping them nurse. But I, we could not get the temperature above 40 degrees in there. So the pigs were just so cold and they kept trying to snuggle up to her. So we had two heat lamps and two heat mats in there trying to warm it up. It had warmed up in the last couple days so we had taken one of the heat lamps out 
and had um, um, taken out one of the heat mats because we don't like, like we don't ever use heat lamps in any of our buildings because of the risk of fire. Um, but it was our only way to keep them warm in this little hut. So, so starting Monday, I started sleeping out here in the dog barn with the dogs, just um, to be careful, like just so I'm close, can know what's going on out here. And um, so I was sleeping out here and about six o'clock Wednesday morning, all of a sudden, all the dogs go running out their little doggy doors. They all have doggy doors so they can go outside. And they all go running out their doors and just barking, just going crazy, howling, just barking like nuts. And so I stepped out the door to see what was going on or see what they're barking at. And the shop is right across the driveway from the dog barn. And I could see the reflection of flames on the, on the wall. And like my heart literally just fell to my feet. I went running out there and like it was completely engulfed. The flames, like so the building is like this little hut is inside of another building. But this other building's getting tore down and there's actually no roof on it. A windstorm took it off a couple years ago and we knew we were tearing it down so we never put the roof back on. So there's no roof, but like the rafters are still there and the flames were clear up into the rafters. And I was afraid that the rafters would catch on fire, that like that building would catch on fire, then it would spread to the buildings around it. So I didn't know what to do, so I quick called 911. I opened up the gate and scooped up all three babies and ran them to the shop and then came back and got her, which the girls showed her at the fair last year. So she is easy to move around with, um, just act like you're showing her and she, she cooperates really good. We waited on the fire department to get here then and by the time they got here, I was pretty embarrassed that I even called because it kind of burned itself out because the hut is plastic, so it just kind of melted down to not much. The video clip that I got is basically what it looked like when the firemen got here. Um, it was way bigger than that when I first saw it. Yeah, mom and dad were in Phoenix, so I was just sitting at home. I called her um, right after the, I called um, 911 and she came out then and helped me. And um, yeah, we actually hadn't even called dad yet. And one of our neighbors who's on the fire department went by on his way to get the fire truck. And um, he was looking and there was no, he couldn't see any smoke or any flames or anything. So he called dad to see if, um, if we had a fire and which is like five o'clock in the morning in Phoenix. And he, dad's like, I don't know. So then dad called us. So that's how dad found out about it. Needless to say, it was very eventful and very <laughs> I was just shaking, but we, um, unfortunately, we never found any remains or anything of the little runt. So that's really sad because I was so excited because he was doing so good. He was literally a third of the size of all the rest of them, but he was so aggressive and he was doing so good. But everyone told us we were supposed to be keeping the home fires burning at home. So, I mean, I guess we did. No more pit cut. It's gone. Yeah, our baby, our runt baby died, apparently. The other three made it out, thankfully. The mama was taking care of them. What do you say? She's trying to dig a hole for him when you came out? Yeah, she's digging a hole right there. You can see it. She's trying to dig that yeah, hole. Yeah, she's starting to dig the hole right there. It's black on this side of the wall, too, so it's a good thing we called and had him come out. It's a little embarrassing when they showed up because it was... Kind of looked like a piddly fire on the ground, but it's a good thing. All right, everyone. So we are getting ready to go on a hike um, with our relation that we were with yesterday. So um, she is uh, big into hiking. She's in like hiking groups and goes on all these big trails. So anyway, she's going to bring us on uh, one of her favorite hikes. Nellie. Line up in a line, we gotta do our stretches. This leg up, get it up. This leg, get it up. Oh, yeah.
to the end. Nellie popped her tire on the hoverboard and then her electric scooter, but working. So now we just have to push her with our hoverboard. And <laughs> wow, now we know what kind of a driver she'll be someday. Brought her baby chicks. They came in the mail. Oh, there they are. You just have to dip their beaks in water when you get them, just to help them. everyone we got all the slide ins in and we are sadly getting ready to jump on the road so we actually have some neighbors from home that have live here in phoenix they have been here all winter um anyway so they're at a campsite in huma arizona um which is about two hours away so we're going to go there they're at a campsite so we're gonna actually stay at their campsite tonight we're gonna spend all afternoon with them and then tomorrow um and then tomorrow we're gonna go on to wilcox um and then we'll go to church there and then we will, after church, we'll jump back on the road and head home. Hopefully we can be home by Monday. That's our goal. So anyways, we're going to finish getting everything hooked up and we'll leave you with you. <laughs>
fun, Nelly? Yeah. All right, everyone. Saturday afternoon, it's 2.30. We're getting the van hooked up. Getting ready to jump on the road. Our destination tonight is to Wilcox, um, which is about five hours away. So hopefully we can get there around 7.30ish. We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> you belong. You guys are naughty. We had it wired and everything. They get their tongues going and they can about undo anything. The camera on the way here, Dad goes, Nelly, when we get out of the camper, life is going to smack us in the face and we're going to have time to do anything. I don't know if we mentioned, but our yard literally looks like a mud lot now because it's 55 degrees out, it's really muddy, and there were 1,200 pound fat cattle running through it. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you all enjoyed watching this week's video. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more like this. Um, we want to say a huge thank you to the Moral Fire Department um, for coming out and helping us and Sadie when we are gone, but I hope you all enjoyed watching this week's video and we'll see you next week.